All right, um, good day, guys. Um, welcome to the first tutorial in a series, Web Development Using PHP and MySQL, and of course, HTML as the front end. Um, so basically, in this tutorial, we are going to be looking at the technology behind building web applications. So which would be PHP. P the PHP will serve as our backend code. We use MySQL for managing and handling the data processing for our web applications with a HTML front end. Okay, um, it's also worth mentioning that um, PHP powers up to seventy percent of the web sites in the World Wide Web. Um, but this tutorial will be will be geared around. It will be a project based tutorial. It's for those who want to start developing applications like Facebook, Jumia. Um, online stores, any, any any sort of application that runs online, okay. So basically, for today, we are going to be looking at how to set up the environment for our PHP web application development, okay. All right. First things first. Let's look at our objectives. Our first objective here is to set up the environment. Now, basically, the core software needed for web application development will be number one, an Apache web server, okay. The Apache web server the my sql database and then any code editor or an ide the word ide simply stands for integrated development environment just at a layman's level just look at it as an environment where you can write your code okay you could use um, we could use vs code for that we could use notepad plus plus any code editor you're comfortable with actually okay um but for this tutorial i will use notepad plus plus for that then after that we're going to be adding my sql to our path variable that will give us the ability to work with MySQL from the command line. Um, I also have to mention that there are other ways you can connect to a MySQL server, but it's also important we get, you know, um, we understand the command line aspect of it, okay? Of connecting to a MySQL service, viewing your available databases, creating database services for an application. Remember, for our web application, and so on and so forth. All right, so. Um, to have Apache and MySQL on your PC, we are going to set up a software called XAMPP Server. The XAMPP Server is a, an application that comes with both your Apache web server and your MySQL database. For those who are a bit experienced in web application development, XAMPP Server should be a familiar name to them. All right, let's cut the chase and run our installation. All right, first things first, we have to type here download exam server usually once you type it the first site that should be up there should be apache and friends okay so we open it up so this is the windows version we have a linux version here we have a mac os version here so um since we're we on the windows platform we can download when i click here the download starts. So since I already have the software, I would cancel it here. Okay, I will just cancel the download. But you should probably let your own run through. Then after that, we have to download our IDE. That is the code editor. That's an environment where we can write the code and debug the code and so on and so forth. So we could use Notepad plus plus for that. So I say download Notepad plus plus. So this is the Notepad plus plus site. Most times they can be generated from more than one site. All right, so here, as of the time of this um, production, version 8 is the latest. So you can just click this and your download starts. Okay, it takes you to this page, you hit the download button, and then your download starts. All right, so the download starts here. Okay, I cancel it because I already have it. Just a second. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. All right, so now we've downloaded the exam server, the notepad. Some of you might prefer VS Code. That's also simple. The procedure remains the same thing. Download VS Code. So that takes you to code.visualstudio.com, right? So remember, these are IDEs or code editors for debugging 
your applications and so on and so forth. So I want to open this side up, opening it. Okay, all right, it's out here. So since we are using a Windows PC, we can download the Windows version of it, right? So we click on Windows and then our download starts, right? So after you've done your download, you are supposed to have these three softwares on your system. Okay, this is the ZAMP server, this is VS Code, this is Notepad++. So we set up um, Notepad++ quickly. It's a simple procedure. Run as an, as an administrator. You say, okay, next, terms and conditions, blah, 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 blah. I've gone through it. <laughs> Trust me, I did. So I agree. So location where the software will be installed, this is it. You go next and next. You create a shortcut on your desktop if you so wish. When you hit the install button, the installation start. But I already have the installation, so I'll cancel this out. But you should probably let yours run through. All right, so cancel. I quit it. So I have Notepad on my PC now. So this is it. Notepad plus plus, not the regular Notepad. Notepad plus plus. If I click on it, you would see. So this is our notepad. So that's where we are going to be editing softwares and so on and so forth. All right, you could also use VS Code. So let me demonstrate how to install that. Just exactly the same way you installed Not um, Notepad++. You could run VS Code as an administrator. You take your yes, accept terms and condition for Microsoft terms and condition for using VS Code. So next, next, then you hit install and your installation starts. So basically that's it. Now, ZAM server. ZAM server, remember I told you, comes with MySQL and Apache. MySQL and Apache can actually be installed separately. Like I said here, MySQL and Apache can be installed separately. But ZAM server is, really, is a really convenient way to set up the boot of them on a development PC or a development environment. All right, so I right click this and I run as administrator. Zam starts. All right, here we are. So, okay. Zam setup next. So, these are the services installed. Mr. Apache is there, MySQL is there with your file server and other services. So, we go next. So, this is the location where it will be installed. So, so you go next 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 and you wrap up the installation successfully so i'll just cancel because i already have that installed all right so so now to verify i've installed vs code and some server vs code is on my desktop but i could still hit the windows button and just type vs code and i would have it open i would have it open my virtual this is my visual studio is the vs code environment right so whichever one you prefer some people like the dark team but anyone is basically okay a okay so um so for my exam server the same way i can hit my windows button go exam and i see zamp is installed it's also important you run zamp as an administrator right so this is my exam server so notice i have my apache service and my mysql service so i can start the apache service here and make sure it starts Right, it says so status change detected, Apache is running. Then for my SQL also I can start it. Status detected run. Now, if you have an error message here, especially for Apache, it's most likely going to be because the port number it runs on. These are the port number. My SQL runs on port 3306. It's usually free on most systems, on any system. But port 80 might be in use by let's say um, a virtual machine or Skype. But if you succeeded in starting it up, okay, then you are at the, on the same page with me. We can move on. Also, make sure you start exam server as an administrator. You can also try restarting your system to be sure you refresh your ports. But this too has to be running for an active web server to be on your PC. All right. So um, now that we've done that, let's now look at how we can access our MySQL from command line. Once we achieve that, then we can talk about our next lesson. All right, let's access, let's configure the path variable. That's the last part. We need to add MySQL to our path variable, which I mentioned would enable us access MySQL from command line. So to do that, first of all, you open your drive C. Get, get your drive C opened. 
this is my PC, this is my drive C. This is my drive C. So I have a folder called ZAMP, of course, because I've installed ZAMP on my drive C. Then I have a folder here called my SQL. When you open my SQL, I have a folder called BIN. This is where the MySQL binaries are stored. Right? So you click this environment here to copy this part, this part. So you click here. And this is the part to my MySQL binary. So I copy it. Copy. Then what do I do next? I hit Windows button, type ENV. When you type ENV, you have edit system environment variables. So if I double click that, it shows me my system environment variables. So you click on environment variables here. Then under system variables, above here is user variables. This is system variables. Under system variables, I locate part. Then you edit the part variable. Click new. Then you add your new part. Easy, peasy, lemon, squeezy. So, um, but if you notice, I already have that on my own part because I've done the setup previously. But you should add this here right at the part then you click ok 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 now if you are if you succeed with the setup we have to also test and verify that our database server is accessible from command line so i hit windows button cmd i open my command prompt if you succeed with installation this command my sql space minus u space root should log you into your mysql environment and here we are we succeeded so this is my sql owned by oracle blah 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 so this is my sql environment if i go show databases i will view all my available databases these are for available applications on my server but ba basically by the time we are done with this tutorial you should have some databases stored here too for your own application store all right if you have any issue with starting up your apache xam server you can just comment in the description and I'll know if I'll make a very short video on how to sort out um, starting up your Apache server, maybe free up a used port and so on and so forth. So thank you guys. By my next tutorial, we are going to run our first simple PHP code, which will be the beginning steps, the baby steps of building our online store project or any kind of web application we are interested in building. Thank you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a beautiful rest of the day. Thank you.